you've talked about Sydney 2000 and 2000 was a, a sensational year for you. Um, but you also competed at, was it Barcelona in 1992 mm-hmm. and then Georgia in 1996? That's right, Atlanta. Yes, 1996. Yeah, look, it was fantastic. It was, um, I suppose my first Olympics is, you know, the one you really remember. Um, yeah. And I think I tell a lot of the, I do these Mel GT speed clinics. So I get to talk about it quite regularly because I have a chat to the kids about my first experience because you know, usually I ask the kids, you know, who would like to be at the Olympics one day and a lot of them put their hands up and, you know, I was just a country kid, you know, running around the farm who also had a dream of doing it. So the moment that you actually turn up to your first Olympic Games, but the most amazing thing, and I feel for those athletes who didn't get experience this because of COVID, um, is being part of that opening ceremony um, at Olympics, you know, and there's a moment where, you're all lining up underneath the stadium to walk out um, into the stadium. And, you know, you take this moment where you look down and you go, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm wearing an Olympic uniform. You go, wow, I'm an Olympian. And then, you know, I tell the story about walking out into the stadium for the first time and you look up into the crowd to see where all the Australians are. And there was this one group of Australians that were there, um, you know, because you look for the green and gold or the Australian flag, but there was this one woman that had this Akubra hat and she's jumping up and down and, you know what, out of 60,000 people, it was my mum. So that was a pretty <laughs> special moment. It's like, hey, mum, I'm at the Olympics. Um, so that was, that was a very, yeah, that was an amazing Olympics. It was a very good experience. I was so nervous. Oh, my gosh. My first 100, I was so nervous. But as I say to all the young athletes, that's all, you know, more experience you have. Like by the time I got to Sydney Olympics, I was just loving life and waving to the crowd and, you know, I've been there, done that. So I knew how to handle that. Um, Atlanta Olympics, I had a bulging disc in my back. I still ran, but I um, ha- I did that six weeks out of um, those Olympics. because they So they weren't probably as memorable. They're still Olympics, don't get me wrong, but it was a bit of a struggle, that one, going into those Olympics. But then to finish off with Sydney was, yeah, pretty special. We'll come back to your injuries, and that's been another big hurdle in your career that you've had to overcome. But how... As you were saying there, you know, how did things change from Barcelona to Sydney? Because, like, I know being a young star, you know, lining up on the the blocks um, at your your school swimming carnival. I remember <laughs> the first year, you know, you you'd be so nervous and you'd have butterflies. You, you like sometimes you'd jump in the pool early or you'd have a false start or whatnot. Um, how did you control that emotion in Barcelona? And as you said, how did things change? Did you just enjoy yourself more, or was it you know that? state mm-hmm. anxiety ability to manage your state anxiety better look there's a whole lot of factors that are in it um yeah the first time uh, i think i had to just really reset you know when i was at the starting blocks because you just got to sit there and go you know i had the fastest woman in the world next to me in my heat which was a good start um but i had you have to sit there and reset and think about and that's and that's one thing i love about the 100 meters it's it's so raw you just have that one moment and you can't mess it up because it's over in such a small amount of time. Um, but I had to just remember, like, think of the process. And that's what you've got to do. You've got to realise that's what you train those hours and hours for, you know, to be able to. And that's a hard thing, too, is uh, your first time you're there is not being aware of what's around you, trying to be fully focused on exactly what you need to do, how you needed to execute the race. Um but again, when I ran my first heat, then I ran the second round and it was easier. And so as you went through that first Olympics, every race got easier. And I'd even, like we had our New South Wales um, junior championships, state junior championships last weekend. And all my athletes are saying the first race is always the hardest, but once you get that out of the way, then the other one becomes easier. Um, and that's exactly what it was like at the Olympics. You just learn to, over time, uh, control those nerves. Nerves are good because it means you care, but you learn to control them and and try to use them more at your advantage rather than as a disadvantage. Yeah, it's a good lesson for anything in life, really, isn't it? You know, Absolutely. On the board. Yeah, and do you know what it's all about too? And this is what I say, and I I've learned that as an athlete that I do whether I'm doing you know I, I was doing some work on television, um, you know whether I'm doing an MC job or when um, I was doing public speaking. It's all about preparation. So the more prepared you are the more confident you are and that's you know you can go in there with a lot more confidence and then that's going to give you a really good performance too so if you if you go in completely prepared and no matter what you do then it's going to make a really big difference 